My guest today on Conversations with Gray Area Drinking Coaches is Kristen Horseman. And Kristen is someone that you want to stick around for and hear from um, because she was a client of mine. And then she is now also a master coach. She's gone through my coach training. She's a nutritionist. And um, she, you'll hear from two sides of the coin with her about being a client and um, then being a coach. So we're going to wait for Kristen to come on. Hang on, everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, I'm wearing my hat again. You guys have all been telling me that you like the hat. So maybe it's going to be my brand. Maybe I'm just going to always wear a hat, but um, it's easy if I don't quite do my hair. So, all right, Kristen, I see you in the scroll. And as soon as I, there's her request to join, hang on everybody, here she comes. Hi, Kristen. Hi. The dead air on Instagram while well, the slow connection, but here you are. So I was telling everyone to hang on because our conversation is um, is going to be a fun one and, and unique in that you are, but this is kind of common too, where I work with people um, who, are, who are in the health industry. You are, are a nutritionist and you were a client and we went through the whole coaching process. You were an amazing client. You, how many years now has it been since you've had a drink? Uh, over two, like 26 months. Okay, awesome. So 26 months alcohol free, and then have also gone through my coach training. So we're going to hear kind of that before, you know, we always like to hear people's stories, where were you, and people can hear a little bit about being on this on the side of coaching, then coming through the coach training and your experience there, and the really fun and exciting things that you're doing out in the community, um, locally, because of the coach training. So let's begin with your story. Sure. So um, I would say that, you know, I was a gray area drinker for oh, like probably the whole time I was drinking, you know, I, pr I started around like college age and then, um, you know, was into kind of like the clubbing and partying on the weekends and things like that. Um, and then uh, even in my 20s, after I graduated college, was still kind of going out with the girls on weekends and, you know, having drinks. Um, and then, and then there was like those after work, you know, happy hours and all those different things and brunches with mimosas. Um, and when I noticed like in 2009, I was actually going through a really difficult time in my life and my drinking definitely ramped up. So it was no longer like just kind of like the party stuff on the weekends. It was, I was really kind of having, um, I was overwhelmed. I was feeling like a little bit of a crisis going on. And then all of a sudden I was drinking every single night, um, several glasses of wine to get through that difficult time. And then luckily I did rein it in at that time. Like I, I hired a therapist and I, and I did some good work. And then I started joining like some, uh, running clubs and things like that. And then I kind of shifted to where I didn't need it every night. And I was just kind of then being more, you know, social. But then fast forward to um, like in 2017 and then into 18 and 19, there was another um, situation in my life where I was literally um, in crisis mode. And then I- And I wanna, uh, Kristen, I just wanna interrupt, just pause really quick, sure. sorry to interrupt you. But this is really important because, you know, what's online, everyone's like, oh, it's just the social thing to do and the, it's glamorized and, and I never thought anything about it. And it was, and the truth is, is very quickly when we start hearing people's stories, there, there's, there's something, there's some loss going on, there's some grief happening, there's some, and this is part of your story. You had those, you know, those pieces. And then it's kind of like when life gets a little bit back on track, alcohol actually kind of drops off. But the truth is, is that when we're navigating and holding something, which you were in 2019, alcohol amps up. And I just, I just want to, again, give voice to that, because I think we like to really quickly regurgitate, like, nothing's wrong, and there's nothing external, and I'm functioning, and yes, and there is some sort of loss or grief or, or something that, um, and understandably, then, you know, we're, we're soothing with alcohol. So sorry to interrupt, but, but keep going. Cause that yeah. is, I know it's an important part of your story. Absolutely. It is. It's, it's really relevant. You know, it's like, you, you know, you don't think, uh, you don't think it's going to happen to you. Right. But you know, 
alcohol, it's, there's really, as we, as you've taught me, there's no safe amount. Um, and then when you're especially using it to quell anxiety or you're tying it to um, emotions, that then you're really setting yourself up for trouble. Um, and, and, and so, yeah. And that's, and that's life. Like none of us are immune to, you know, there's, there's going to be loss. There's going to be pain. There's going to be, and, and like you just said, none of us are immune to it. And so it's, it's a slippery slope and yeah, it's this, this thing that, you know, oh, that won't happen to me or it's those people. And it's like, nope, nope, here they are. They're right here. I'm, I'm talking with them, train them, work with them every day and, and very impressive life and career resumes. Right. Um, and life happens and we have hard emotions. And exactly. If exactly. It's so true, you know, and yeah, it, it, uh, it yeah, it, it was a really, really, it was a hard time in my life in 2018 and 2019 in particular. And, you know, in 2019, um, it was hard for me to get through a day without drinking. And it was like the cravings were so overwhelming it was like they totally were running the show. They totally had taken over my life at that point. Um, I had just really lost um, so much of myself. I had entered a very deep, dark depression. And I had, you know, I had felt the most overwhelmed I had ever felt in my entire life. It was, part of it was kind of just a perfect storm of things that were happening. And part of it too was that I had actually surrounded myself uh, by some very um, heavy drinkers, and I, and I and I was and to be fair, like I was kind of the leader of the group. Like I was the one hosting a lot of these big parties. Um, you know, I was the one. Like I, we had a bar in our last house, and it was always stocked. And you know, if we weren't hosting the party, we were hosting the after party. You know, so full disclosure, I you know I take full responsibility. Um, but then when when um, a crisis happened on top of all of these other things, you know, it, it's almost like it got, like drinking growing up was already like a normalized thing. Like I was observing all the, uh, all the adults in my life drink. So I just thought it was normal to drink with dinner or to have, you know, a cocktail at five o'clock or whatever. Um, and then, and then it really like intensified during that really difficult time in my life. Um, and you know, I, I definitely entered the danger zone like 2019. And and you and I started working together the end of 2019, right? No, Is actually, uh, uh, January 7th, 2021, we had our very first oh, coaching I think session. it was 2020. Yeah. Okay, okay. So All right. I'm, I'm glad, like, if, if I had tried to hire you in 2019, you would have said you're not, you're not ready. So, because I was, I was too far extreme. I was definitely in that end stage of drinking. Um, well, and, and so you're saying that this is important here because this is part of the training, um, which, is, which is a big piece of staying in our lane, the professional scope. You know, there's a lot of people out there and, and this is not, um, we want to take this very, very seriously, um, uh, you know, with drinking. And so I'm very big with that in the training of being able to assess where somebody is and if they're, if you know, are they truly a gray area drinker? Because as coaches, we want to be in our lane ethically, legally, professionally with this. So your yeah. statement now going through the coach training, that you have kind of that assessment and discernment. But let, let's jump ahead yeah. of um, just really quickly. So I want to get into the coach training, but really quickly then coming in as a client. And when you were ready, um, what that experience was on that side of the fence. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the great thing, like in 2020, I was able to make some huge changes in my life. Right before the pandemic started, I had hired a, a fantastic therapist, and then we had got our puppy, and just having the, the puppy and being able to like co-regulate with her and having something to take care of, like that made a big impact. And then actually the shutdown of 2020 was actually super helpful to me because I was really struggling with the FOMO. Because like I said, like, all, like I was always going to like, you know, these wine tastings or beer festivals or parties all the time with my friends. And then all of a sudden it was like, I wasn't, I wasn't able to do any of that. So, so then the shutdown of 2020, um, it gave me like time and space. It gave me a break from that debilitating FOMO. So FOMO is definitely a big part of my story. And again, I take responsibility for that. You know, it's not anybody's fault. Like they weren't doing anything intentional to hurt me. And, you know, they were just doing their thing. And if it worked for them, that's fine. But, you know, while I was struggling, that was a big issue. 
Um, I also started to pick up a lot of Quitlet. Like I was, I was, I found Amy Grace, Laura McCowan, and I found you as well. Kind of like around the end of 2019 into 2020. That's when I started to get into all of, all of you because I had gone to a couple of AA meetings, but they weren't resonating for me. Um, so, you know, there's many paths to recovery. I'm a firm believer with that. And I mean, I tried everything. I was like throwing the kitchen sink, you know, at, at what was going on with me. Um, so, but when I started to really, uh, go into like kind of these, you know, the people who, who operate a little bit differently, like yourself and Annie Grace, um, talking more about the brain chemistry that was starting to resonate with me. So during 2020, I finally was putting together days, weeks, and months again before a slip. Um, so then, and then I was just kind of like really spent all of 2020, I would say it was like, to me, it was like a year of letting go of things that were no longer serving me. Like I was literally like just peeling back different things and, and it took a lot of strength and a lot of work and I'm so grateful I did that. And then fast forward to, um, so January 1st of 2021. Um, uh, you know, I had, I had gotten a little triggered over the holidays, so I was starting to go downhill again a little bit and I was starting to turn, I was like rationalizing using alcohol. I was like, oh, you know, I, I just accomplished all these months without drinking. Like, I don't, it's fine, you know? So, but then I started, started drinking and, and then January 1st, I remember having alcohol during the day and I kind of like, I got oozy. I kind of like, wasn't with it. And then my husband found me and he's like, oh my God, like what, what is happening? Like, seriously, what is going on? And then I remember like when the, when the alcohol started to wear off and I started to um, sober up, like it clicked. That was the day it clicked. And I said, I can't do this anymore. I, I just, I'm, do, I'm done. I, I'm so done. I'm over this. I, um, I just, you know, I just want to like get past this, move forward in my life. You know, I'd always been like that overachiever, A type personality and and like leading up to that like i'd always accomplished whatever i set out to do but this was the this was the one thing i i seemed like i couldn't accomplish like why can't i overcome alcohol and then so then the very next day like i was just on the computer researching i had revisited your ted talk um and then when i was on your website and and i read this line and it was jolene guides clients through the missing physiological pieces that they need to reduce excessive alcohol consumption anxiety and cravings and that sentence resonated to my core and i said okay i need to book a discovery call um i saw that you had that available and so within a couple of days you and i had a discovery call and then basically at the end of the discovery call i knew i was going to start working with you and on January 7th, we had our very first, uh, that 90 minute intake. And I mean, my whole life changed. Like I, I don't like, there's like a before now and an after like before. And, yeah. And you, you haven't drank since. No, no. And, and I have no desire. The cravings are gone. Um, alcohol like actually repulses me now, which is, which is such like a wild turnaround, you know, like I like the term retired party girl. I'm very much the retired party girl. Like I was leading the charge lots of times, you know, encouraged, you know, always amped up to drink. And the fact that it, I actually despise it now and like, like grosses me out. Like, like what, like, this is amazing. <laughs> like I have my life back. And this is such a good place to come into coaching where your story is and why I want people to hear your story. Um, because you, you had this experiential back and forth, drinking at times, you know, ex really excessive amounts, knowing that, you know, by there's no question it was a problem how you were drinking, but then doing your own reading and having your own stop periods. And like you said, it was work. And, but then you were going, you were back on that merry-go-round again. And that's where this coaching is so beneficial. Um, but, but it's, it's a unique guiding process. Of, it's not just kind of like, oh, choose your own adventure. <laughs> like what, where do you want to go this week? It's clients are coming in. And I say this in the training, they want the how, they want the tangible, like what are these nervous system resources like what is this what are, like you read on the website what are these missing pieces so let's talk about that being on that side of the fence as the client what that was like for you you haven't had a drink since and then being on the side of you know going through the coach training so what was different you've done therapy you would read books you you know you knew as many people do but what then did when you came into coaching really started to click and was different for you yeah yeah, um, I think, you know, like, 
uh, one thing that I remember from our very first conversation, um, when you said that I was like a very typical client coming in, I was like, oh my gosh, like it, it, it really took a weight off me because, you know, there was so much shame and I, I, I felt like kind of like a, not a, like a freak or like, oh, I was different or I was broken or I was damaged. And, you know, what's like, I just wanted to hide. And the fact they're like, no, like you are literally my exact, like typical client that I get all the time. I didn't feel so alone. And that really like that, that, that was a game changer for me. Um, and then talking about, um, and I knew I was ready to make changes when I started working with you, but to be fair, the forever, question definitely was overwhelming and I like that you addressed that very quickly um I think we started talking about even in our very first coaching session how you know the forever question and you kind of like you really took a lot of that that burden off too because you know so you encouraged me to sign up for the 90 days which I was I wholeheartedly like agreed like I felt like 90 days of having the accountability with you and kind of having you guide me um was was appropriate for my situation um, and you know, but, and then you were kind of like, you know what, just worry about the 90 days right now. Like you've got me, you have me for the next 90 days. Like, like, like basically, you know, walking alongside me. And I was like, okay, I can totally do 90 days. Like that's no problem. And then when we did start to talk, talk about the forever question, you, you gave me some resources and some podcasts to listen to. And, and it just like, again, I was like, oh my gosh, okay. Like it just made me feel so confident that I could do it. And it really didn't take long. I'm pretty sure within the first couple of weeks, like, like I knew that it was not just going to be the 90 days. I knew it was going to be forever. Um, and then, yeah, like, like I love the daily accountability because every single day I had to think about myself. How was I going to address things going on in my daily life? You know, if I was feeling anxious or, or fatigued or overwhelmed, you know, you, you were giving me um, resources and then I could try them out when a situation came up and then, you know, to get through the craving. Um, and then it just really, it didn't take long for really the cravings to go away. And, and to be fair, I think it was great that I, I had, um, I did have that additional support from a therapist because I was still processing some really heavy things in my life. And then I was learning DBT skills and then I was in like a women's processing group. So, um, I just think like, like, I love that I had a team around me. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, but just being able to talk to you once a week, you know, you, you held space for me and you just, you know, you always made me feel like I wasn't alone. Like I would maybe say things that I had done with my drinking and you were like, oh yeah, I did that. And I was like, oh, oh, she did that. Like look where she is now. And she, you know, drank like similarly to like how I did. Um, so again, it's just making me realize that, you know, not only was I not alone, but it was something like, like I can overcome this. Like, look how far Jolene's come. Yeah. And you grabbed on to the missing pieces. Um, you know, I've worked with many, many clients, but you grabbed on like a bulldog and ran with it. Totally. Um, like, what were some of your favorite nervous system pieces that you didn't know before you came into the coaching? Um, I would say right off the bat, guided imagery. Guided imagery is one of my absolute favorite tools that you've taught me. And I, I um, so what I do, I have like this routine and I, once you told me about it, um, I, I don't think I've really missed a night. Um, so I, I sleep on my side. So I put one earbud in. So I, 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 I oh, want to stop really quick right there. I just, I want to interrupt you again and pause. When you say you haven't missed a night, this has been two plus years. This is the, cause there's this whole, you know, high achieving, performing, functioning, professional women. Like that's the marketing, right? So we know how to perform. We know how to achieve. We know how to check boxes. But as you know, when, when we enter this coaching, my mantra, you know, I'm a broken record saying this is not about checking boxes. This is not about doing something just to do something. This is about when you do it, do you get an effect? Because when we drink, we get an effect. So you got such an effect, and there's data on this, y'all. There's data that's, guided imagery is not meditation, and guided imagery works on the limbic brain. And there's very specific guided imagery that I share with clients that I teach my coaches. And knowing this data, and I said to Kristen, give it a try. I'm curious. Over this next week, before we talk again, and what she just said here is, I'm still doing it. 
And that's the point of this coaching. I want clients and I want the coaches I'm training, their clients, that it's not just checking a box during the coaching engagement that you're with the coach, but that it actually gives a, a benefit, a shift that you notice and you want to repeat it. And here's Kristen with no accountability, no whatever, <laughs> two years later and saying, this not only worked, but I'm still doing it just because it it works exactly so that's the benefit and the differentiator with these nervous system regulation resources they're not just boxes to tick because so many people are like oh i meditate i do yoga i diffuse oils i'm like but is it what's happening when you do it and you got a yeah. real positive benefit from the specific guided imagery where there's where it works in the limbic brain which is really really cool yeah I love it. And I love that there's so many different options out there. So every night I kind of just choose what's relevant. You know, like when you first told me about it, I was about to get surgery and you, and you, and that's actually why you brought it up at that point. And you were like, well, there's actually a specific like surgery related, um, got an imagery. And then after the surgery was done, like I, I mean, that surgery was fantastic. Like I, I had like a, the quickest recovery, like I was actually documenting my recovery after. And when I was posting pictures on Facebook, it was actually my deviated septum and my, my whole face. So most people like, like I looked like pretty amazing. Like the next day, you know, it was probably the roughest. And then after that, like people were like, you had surgery? You had surgery on your face on your deviated septum? Like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, because I, I regulated like my nervous system. My nervous system was so ready for surgery. You know, and now, um, and now I just use it for like, oh, the, there's like an anger and forgiveness one. There's, um, you know, there's one for, for uh, overcoming illness. You know, there's different like emotional ones, physical ones, um, some for focus, concentration, procrastination, whatever. So yeah, hands down, one of my favorite tools. And, and I really do like, um, it was a different model when, when you were sharing, you know, when you were, when you taught me about, um, well, I'm giving you tools or resources. And it, like you said, it's not to get a gold star. Like, oh, I did it. I did the tool. You, you very quickly were like, and I had to wrap my brain around it because nobody had ever like presented it like this. And you were like, well, you're here. You're going to use the tool, but you're going to notice how you feel. And I think that is like noticing the fact that you kept saying the word notice, notice, what do you notice? And those were, and then the accountability emails, I always had to say what I was noticing. Um, you know, you feel a certain way. And then, you know, in the past, like you would reach for, let's say alcohol, you know, you reach for alcohol to, to change how you feel. Cause you don't like, obviously like if you feel yucky and you're like, okay, I'm going to drink so I can feel better. So now we're reaching for different tools and it's like, well, what are you noticing? And like, I had never, my, you know, I'd never like thought of a, of a tool like that before. Uh, so that was very different, and and I really like that. So there was, you know, it's like it takes the pressure off too, because you know, there's no obligation to like every single tool that you're gonna yeah. throw at me, you know. Yeah. So and but, different tools are just resonate at different times, and there's a tool maybe I use once, and then I don't think about it for a few months, and then I'm like, oh yeah, let me go back to that tool that I really liked a few months ago, and so you know, always changing it up. So what drew you then into the coach training? So. It's really cool too. So right the same exact time that I started working with you, um, I had actually just enrolled myself in health coaching school. So it was really neat because I was obviously, it was like working with you in real time as a client. And then I was studying coaching. So I was actually getting this dual education and I was in both seats every single day the whole time we were working together. I was like always getting to think of both sides of that coin. Um, so then I spent all of 2021, um, going through the health coaching program. And then, um, I graduated towards the end of that year. And I remember, um, I think by the spring, um, you were, you know, you and I were still, we're still coaching. Um, and you were, you were talking about the training and you were like, well, you know, you're, you're, you're obviously going to graduate from health coaching this year. Um, and I do offer a, a training for coaches for the gray area drinking and, you know, I think you would be wonderful. And I was like, oh, so you, so you kind of planted that seed. And then like, as the year was going on, I was like thinking about it and thinking about it. And I was almost ready. I was like so pumped. I kind of wanted to jump in that summer, but I, you did say, you said, but the, the only caveat is just get, give yourself an entire year without alcohol. Mm -hmm. Then you can do the training. And that like the wisdom of that was just genius. I, I truly believe that that is always a policy that you should keep. Um, because that whole first year, you know, when you're really kind of repairing the nervous system, 
um, the first year, you know, you're still going to get like anxiety and, and things happening. Um, I mean, but you're, and you're totally, slowly kind of changing the course of how you react and, you know, those neural pathways. Um, and it, I, so I truly believe that having a solid year under my belt was a very good idea. Like just, just how like I would think differently and feel differently in my body. And I was kind of more receptive, I think, to the material and, you know, it, yeah, I just, so that was, that was really smart. So yeah. So then well, in January, and I just, I want to add in there too, because I mean, that's, it's very, it's the top thing on the sales page of, you know, people who come into my training, I, I do do a vetting process of having a uh, certification or licensing um, of working with people. So you know how to do that, that piece. And if alcohol has been a personal issue that you have at least 12 months and, and why I say this, and, you know, thank you for saying that Kristen, but also it's, um, I just want to say this publicly, uh, you know, so many of the clients that we work with are, um, they can be weeks, months, and even years out of not drinking. But just because we don't drink doesn't mean the nervous system is calibrated. And so if we haven't, because it's all about embodiment. So if we haven't had that embodiment experience and, try, and th you know, spend three months of not drinking, and now I want to coach somebody who hasn't drank for eight months, but, um, and, you know, they, they've got that, it's like they've gone through a couple more seasons, you know, then, and trying to talk with them about regulating the nervous system when we're only three months or six months or so there's a we're not coming from theory we're coming from embodiment and so often people will say oh i know i'll never drink again i'm only two months into not drinking i want to do the coach training but my question is how would you feel about coaching somebody which is often the reality who is nine months or 18 months and you know me personally where i felt like i was hanging by a thread what on this last stop and now it's i'm in my ninth year of not drinking but the hardest time so far in this nine years was 18 months into not drinking so if i had a coach who was only three months into not drinking so that's the piece of we want to we talk so much about co-regulation and working with the embodiment and so you know we can only go as far as we've gone and so that's a big piece of, of why that criteria is there um, of work, you know, working with clients of where we've gone with our own process, you know, through the seasons, literally, um, yeah. and internal seasons with, with not drinking. So, um, what are you doing now that you've gone through the coach training? Um, you have some exciting things that, that have come to you because you have this certification and this knowledge about gray area drinking. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, last year after the training, um, I started to, you know, I didn't, I was a brand new coach, you know, in general. And, but you had, um, during the training, you know, you had really helped us with the business side. In fact, it was right during one of our training sessions when we were talking about like the power statements, mm -hmm. that was one of the most, I think, impactful sessions of the whole training for me personally, because as we were actually talking in the Zoom class, like, like without, like, it was like, I had this beautiful verbiage that just like flowed out of me. And I was like, wow, like it, it was just, it was like lightning struck my brain as we were talking. And so I came up with this, you know, beautiful statement and um, I'll read it for you. Um, I work with type A individuals prone to perfectionism who have a lot on their plate and rely on alcohol night after night to try and relax. If you're sick of letting alcohol dim your light, then together we can brighten your life so you can self-regulate your nervous system, live an alcohol-free life, and elevate your life instead of escaping it. And I just, like, that, that statement that I came up, like, literally during class, like, that has been, like, my statement. And, and it, it resonates. It, it speaks to my personal journey. It speaks to now the clients I work with. Um, and it, it really like, like lit a fire in me. And after the training was done, you know, I, I started to look into my LLC. I started to buy website domains. So you gave me like that push, that confidence, that motivation to do all that. And then, um, in, uh, and then over the summer of last year, like I was putting out feelers with people, uh, was kind of just do, doing some word of mouth to, to start working with clients and very quickly people started signing up. And then a few months later after that, I had my website. 
um, up and running. And, you know, I just, I just continue to work with clients. I love the one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, you know, uh, the model that, you know, you and I did when I was a client. Um, that, that is something I've been really enjoying continuing doing, you know, it's like, it's my wheelhouse. Like, I feel like because I was in the client shoes and, and then the coaching shoes, like, like I can kind of do that, that one-on-one -on -one coaching, like in my sleep at this point. So. <laughs> yeah. And that, and that's the method. That's the nourish method that, that everyone gets. Exactly. Um, you have an exciting thing uh, going on in Phoenix. Share, share that. Yeah. So I've been a part of the junior league of, uh, uh, of Phoenix for the last couple of years. And it's really exciting because um, one of the women approached me and said, you know, we do, so we do workshops for members because part of the junior league, it's to promote volunteering in the community. It's also to develop the potential of women. So as a junior league member, you get the benefit of like having these workshops available where we learn, you know, skills like maybe building your resume or building your LinkedIn profile or some budgeting. Like those are just some examples. This year, they want me to do a whole gray area drinking workshop for the members. And I am stoked. Just like, it was such an honor to be asked and, you know, I, my wheels started turning immediately and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just going to be sharing, um, you know, my story and how I navigate being a non-drinker in an alcohol centric world. And, you know, and I'm going to talk about the brain and, and then everybody who, you know, who's in the training is going to learn some real live tools that they could start using immediately. And, you know, whether you drink or not, um, you know, everybody experiences some anxiety, you know, it's at one point in their life. So it's, it's like, who can't use like a tool that's, you know, free, easy, simple, you know, to use in their life. Um, no matter, no matter really where you are, like kind of uh, on the spectrum. So, yeah. and, so, and again, you were asked because you've gone through this training and now have this certified expertise to speak directly on this topic. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. What, um, what have we left out? What do you feel is relevant that, that we didn't touch on today? Um, so yeah, like, like going back to the training, I would say, um, like a huge, huge benefit that I absolutely loved that you did this. And I actually returned to it quite often. You, um, had some clients, um, agree to, to recording some intro discovery calls and some, an intake call and even some follow-up calls. So we get to literally hear you in action talking to real clients, like this is not a drill. These, we, these were real clients who, you know, were gray area drinkers and hired you to help them stop and regulate their nervous system. And the fact that you include that in the training, I can't tell you, like, I have listened to them multiple times. Um, the first couple of times I was like taking notes, you know, because the nuance of how you ask questions and hold space for people um, it's just a game changer. Like it's, it's amazing. And I, that's, uh, to me, that was very unique about your training and something special that you offer. Mm, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, when I curate and write and design, um, offerings, I, I'm always kind of, if I were the student, what would I want? Um, and in my health coach training, it was all theory. It was all like motivational interviewing, the theory of it. But then it's like, but I don't really, you know, like now I'm in front of a client. Like how, it's always the how and, and hearing more of the process. And so, um, I, you know, I've curated and developed over the years of what is it that I, if I were in the student role, which I've been and still continue to be, what really serves me? And um, being able to hear which I've never heard in another training, but, um, right. <laughs> but I did it special. because I would, I would have, you know, I want to hear it. So, That's and, and coaching, you know, clients over many, many years, there's been conversations where my brain is thinking, oh my gosh, if this were recorded right now, this would be gold for, so I, I mean, I would just even have that thought of that people need to hear this, but we're not recording. I, I want to capture it. So thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. I had to highlight that because it's just, it's huge. It's, it's big. Awesome. So you are, your Instagram handle, it's not your name, right? Or is it your name? It's actually, I call it Coach Kristen Horseman. That's right. Okay. So yeah, it's a little ball. Coach Kristen Horseman. 
at. Um, I will put that below the video. You all follow her, check out her offerings. You're working one-on-one -on -one yep. with clients right now, gray or yep. clients. Um, so any, any last just wrap up, wrap up thoughts that you want to let people know about? Uh, let's see. Yeah. Um, you know, I just, I, I just, I just love, you know, being, you know, through the client and now the coach, you know, I just have, I just feel like I have so much freedom. Like I, I can be around alcohol and, you know, it's, it doesn't phase me at all. If there's no cravings, there's no desire when I'm going through a difficult time, you know, cause life's still going to come at you. Mm -hmm. Um, but the fact that, you know, when I have gone through experienced difficult times in these last two years, um, the neural pathways have been rerouted so effectively that, you know, I'm turning to um, things like I'm still using guided imagery, you know, I go out and maybe go for a walk. Um, you know, I, I love, I have keep like an acupressure ring um, in my purse, you know, like. Oh, I that's another have... thing you grabbed onto. Yeah, yeah. I love, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always keep one in my purse because you never know when you're I, on the go. I, I've got a bowl of them there, but they're downstairs. I don't, yeah, I love those. I remember that was, and it's funny because it's like, as things come across when they're kind of, you know, my, my monthly fate, it's like the flavor of the month. <laughs> when we were working together, that was, that was one of the things that's yeah. so funny. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's so funny. another thing too, I reference a lot. Like I don't, I don't have to follow a day count, you know, like in the beginning, I would say like the first 90 days of working with you, like getting to 30, 60 and 90, like those were huge milestones. Oh, and you also taught me how to celebrate those milestones to kind of like anchor in all that positive and, and good work. So that's, that's another uh, tidbit I'll throw out. Um, but you know, ever probably after once we started to get past like the 90 days and then maybe a couple months after, like, I don't look at the day count. Like it's like this program, it, you don't have to do the one day at a time because there's nothing to overcome each day. It's like, you've changed, you've healed your brain, you've rerouted those, you know, created new neural pathways. So I just get to live my life. And I kind of just look at it by like years now, like, like, uh, you know, two, two plus years or whatever. Every once in a while for, for the heck of it, I may Google like, oh, how many days has, has it been? But whenever I do things like that, it's just to kind of see like, wow, like look how much time has passed. Like, look how many, happier more regulated days i've had in my life so if i google days or it's just to kind of celebrate really and and just to see those big numbers they're only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger of course so you know i just what, uh, Kristen, yeah. what would you tell um a coach who's on the fence about coming in has been maybe watching thinking about it knows about the program but still is like uh, on the fence what would you say to that to that coach I mean, it's this, this training is so valuable. It's so unique. Um, you know, it's like the, the, it's, it's the, I mean, I'm such like a living example of, you know, why this coaching works, um, and how effective it is. And I just think it's an investment in yourself and your coaching. The thing is like, there's, we're, there's millions of gray area drinkers. You know, so it, depending on whatever you're currently doing in the healthcare field, whether it's coaching or therapy or being a physician or whatever, it's only going to add to what you're doing. And, be, and then you'll be able to kind of like when you're working with people, you'll know, like you'll understand like how the gray area drinkers work. And then you'll understand how to resource and repair them and guide them through it. And there's no other training out there like yours um, that, that will get people well equipped. And then I think, um, and then I have to bring up the master coach, uh, group because the mastermind group, like the second I got my first client, I contacted you and said, I know you have a mastermind group for your alumni coaches. Um, I just started working with clients, like, please, I would love to sign up. And so I've been doing that since last year too. And I look forward to those, you know, every other week, uh, zoom calls, the, the collaboration, the community, um, and just, I, I like, it's, it's, to me, it's, I call it like continue, continuing education. Um, like that's how I found my website designer, because one of the other coaches in your mastermind group gave me the name of somebody who they, she had worked with. And I was like, wow, like the, it's so valuable. Like the, the, the value of this training hasn't stopped at the, you know, it didn't stop at the seven week mark. It's not like, okay, seven weeks ended and you know, okay, figure it out or whatever. It's like, no, like there's, there's so much I keep gaining 
from the value of the whole program and just, you know, working with you and now all these different capacities from, you know, especially with me, like client to coach to now like master coach. So, you know, I'm, I'm so excited. And it's like, it's like, oh my gosh, like, look, look what I've accomplished in these two years. Like what, what are the next, what is next year going to look like at this time and the year after that, you know, and I mean, who knew I'd have like a website like a year ago, I didn't have a website, you know, I was just, uh, you know, in your coaching program. So, I mean, I've just, I've been flying. So I just, you have been, you have been. been. It's, that, it's, it's just the trajectory of your growth and, and it's, it's common. Um, for the coaches who come in. I, I keep saying it, and I know it can just sound like a cliche tagline, but coaches really do launch. They really spread their wings and run with this. There's a niche here, there's a need, and it puts those, those pieces together with the physiology and, and supporting you know, with the business too. So I've been in, the, been in boots to the ground with clients. I'm not teaching from an academic theoretical like do what I say but I've never been where I'm you know, I'm in there right. with clients so um so thank you so much for all of that Kristen it's so fun to talk with you have you part of the cohort and um I'm taking applications and I'm interviewing people now the link is in my Instagram bio the next training starts April 3rd so send submit your application set up a time with me i can get all your questions answered and i look forward to reading and reviewing applications kristen thank you for your time thank you for your energy and everyone go give kristen a follow thank you so much this is this is a blast i always love talking with you so good thanks kristen bye, bye everybody bye.